Hello and welcome to another edition of TSL Talk and Adam it's good to be back behind the big desk and a pretty interesting round of TSL games last weekend. Yeah we certainly saw a couple of uh, you know surprise results in, in somewhat South Launceston inflicting uh, a defeat at West Park on Burnie which uh, I thought you know it was a chance without Jason Laycock but the fact they named him and he played was probably a little bit more surprising uh, and then Lauderdale getting beaten up by Launceston was certainly uh, you know very disappointing for the Bombers. Just having a quick look at the ladder we've got four teams at the top now obviously South Lonnie on top, which is great to see. Burnie, Clarence and Launceston, you think it's a, a fighting for and a fair gap to the rest of them? Yeah, moment? I think it is. I guess the, the, the really starting to take shape now. Um, and as we've, you know, there's been the print the last couple of days that Lord Dale seem to be the pretenders at the moment. We all thought they were going to be the big improvers, but they're really struggling. South Launceston flying and Burnie, you know, once Laycock gets a couple more games back under his belt, I reckon they'll, um, they'll start hitting their straps again. And Clarence have also hit their straps as well, and it's it's really tight that group of four. But there's probably no standout premiership favourite at the moment. No, there's not, and it's good for the competition. You know, we've really wanted. You know, there's always been the last couple of years a Burnie, a Clarence, a Launceston that's been either undefeated or lost one or two games and been high flying, and the rest of the pack have been chasing. So good to see a bit more. You know, a bit of an even spread this year, and even towards the bottom half, you're going to have Lord Dale, Glenorchy, and North Hobart probably fighting for that last spot in the final. So that'll be an intriguing battle as the next few rounds. Unfold. And a good win for North Hobart on the road last week uh, up at Aurora Stadium. It's never easy to win uh, interstate, intrastate, so it's a good win for them. Yeah, it was. You know, I guess you know the Bombers would have been up and about with Nathan Brown mm. uh, on deck, uh, and for the Demons to go up there, who have shown some pretty patchy form this year, and to get the result, yeah, as you say, it's a big result. And the pleasing for them, Nick Gill comes in and kicks four goals, uh, gives him something to kick to straight away. Yeah, I guess we've all been waiting for um, you know for him to get a bit of continuity in his football. He's been hampered by hamstring injuries, and to see him get out there and you know show what he can do, I think is uh, is going to be great for the competition. We touched on it earlier, but uh, Launceston probably put in one of the more eye-catching performances of the season so far to come down to Lauderdale. Uh, which is always a tough trip and absolutely smash uh, the Bombers in the wet down there. Yeah, Brennan Savage has got them playing great football at the moment and when you've got Sonny Whiting just patrolling mm. that forward line, he's really relishing the fact that Derby Shear and Finch aren't there this year and that's his forward line, he can push forward, um, you know, and they've still got, you know, they've got some talented Mariners to come back in later in the year, so, you know, they're, they're starting to really look as though uh, they're, they're the Launceston from a couple of years ago, which was, uh, I guess, the, the premier side in the competition. An interesting game to start off the round this week. Uh, probably everyone's going to pick South Lonnie to beat North Lonnie, but probably what's been going on off-field, there's been a lot of talk between the presidents and uh, these two clubs aren't really getting along at the moment. No, they're not. There's talk, obviously, with the doggies wanting to get into Aurora Stadium um, from next year and then talk of the zoning and everything else that's going on, even with Launceston as well. There's a little bit of a scrap going on in the northern part of the state. So a big battle. Yes, North Launceston will be disappointed from last week. And Zane Little John, you know, has shown that he can get them playing good football. They push Clarence down here. Uh, and they have tested a couple of the other sides as well. So at Aurora, you'd think they, you know, they, they might fancy themselves against South Lonnie, but the way the doggies are playing at the moment, Mitch Lord's got them up and about. Hard to see them being beaten. Uh, Glenorchy won three in a row, but uh, they're going to face a big ask against Burnie at KG5 this week. Yeah, they'll be smarting the Dockers, I think, from last week. They don't lose too many at West Park, and, uh, and as I said, with Jason Laycock sort of coming back, another game under his belt, I reckon they might come down and finish off their southern trip with three wins. Probably the closest round of the, uh, or the, yeah, the closest match of the round is uh, North Hobart and Lauderdale. North Hobart coming off that really good win on the road, as we mentioned. Lauderdale got absolutely smashed last week, but at North Hobart, could be a tight one. Yeah, <laughs> you just don't know what to read into both these sides, really. I guess Lauderdale, you know, have on paper one of the better lists in the competition, but they just really are battling at the moment to find the chemistry, I guess, between those guys. And then with Nick Gill in there, you know, Jesse Wells at the other end, good spawn that the Demons have now got, and if they can get Gill into some form, um, you know, they, you know, Siggins will probably be the matchup for for Gill, but whether they mm. can contain him, I guess, is the other thing. And uh, Clarence and Hobart at Blunston Arena and Devonport and Launceston at Devonport. Probably uh, two clear-cut favourites there. Yeah, these might get into turning to blowout material unless the weather really deteriorates. So, you know, you'd, you'd like to see Hobart put up a bit of a fight against Clarence. They're probably capable of it. I don't think they can stick with them for four quarters. Um, but, you know, the way the Roos are playing at the moment, they should get the job done and it would be the same up north. You know, I guess the fact that Devonport did upset Launceston mm. last time they played, but can't see that happening again. No, uh, Tigers are showing some signs of improvement this year. They've definitely come a long way from the, the previous season. Yeah, they have, and probably, you know, credit to Anthony McConnell and, and the James Charlesworth is the clear, mm. I guess, you, you see him play, and he's a cut above everybody else at that club at the moment, and, and probably dragging a few of the other boys along with him. Well, Adam, once again, thanks very much for your thoughts. Remember, for all your T-cell stories, pick up your copy of The Mercury or go to The Mercury online.